Hi Fixer family, it's Charmin. Welcome to Fixin' 2. On our first project, we're going to be making some uh, pieces for tier trays, shelves, wherever you'd like to put them using some scrap wood, some ribbon. We'll be using some decorative glaze stain, paint, some craft paper, these little pumpkins that I got from the Dollar Tree, also some napkins from the Dollar Tree, and some scissors. So I'm excited. Let's get started. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do is paint these pumpkins. Now, I know that they have the ones that are plain, but they didn't have them out right now. And so I went ahead and got these that have the faces on there. And I tried to paint over it with a couple of coats with the regular acrylic paint, and it still bled through, as you can see. So what I decided to do was to go ahead and, I guess you can kind of say counteract that black <laughs> little pumpkin face, and just paint it over it with a... Um, using just a one coat of the black acrylic paint, letting it fully dry. Once it has dried, I did grab my Waverly chalk paint in the color, I believe it's pumpkin, and I did go over this with two coats of this. Now taking my um, scrap wood here that I have, one of them I took Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral and put one coat on there. That's the one we're going to be using with our napkins here in a minute. But the other one I'm leaving just like it is because I'm going to be using some of my uh, crafting paper. You can pick this up at Hobby Lobby, real inexpensive, and some Mod Podge to cover it. And then we're going to do something to all of the edges and to the back. So when I traced it out, I did trace it out just a touch bigger than the actual piece because that way we won't have any um, issues when we get after everything has dried and we um, kind of cut it down or you'll see the technique that I use to get it off there. I'm just gonna take my Mod Podge and put a nice coat on there. And then I'm gonna take Mod Podge and put it on the back of my paper as well. Because this is a little bit thicker, I wanted to do both sides to make sure that I got good contact with the wood and my paper. So then I'm just gonna kind of move it around on there. You have a few you know, minutes there, or a few seconds I should say, to move it around exactly where you need it. And then I took a little um, squeegee tool that I have here and I just made sure that it was good and smooth, no bubbles, no, you know, as less wrinkles as I could get in there. And you see that my paper is really not, wasn't quite wide enough for this, so I had to kind of piece it together. I just kind of folded over the edges just a little bit and then went back over it with some more Mod Podge, kind of going in what the grain on that paper showed. On the next piece, I had cut it to where it would e um, seamlessly fit on there and you wouldn't even be able to tell unless you looked super close that I had pieced these together using the same technique, of course, by putting it on the wood and then, of course, onto the paper that once I put it there, put some more on the top of it, I'm gonna let it completely dry. Now bringing my other piece of wood that is completely dry from the paint back in, I'm going to use the napkin to cover it. Now I thought these pumpkins were so cute. They, to me, really had a rustic feel to it. And when you get napkins, you wanna make sure that you, if it's double ply, you want to separate it. Some of them have even a three ply backing. And um, so you wanna make sure you get it all the way down to just one ply of where your print is. Now I'm only using one side of it, of course, um, and so I'm just cutting that in half kind of deciding about where I want it to go and then I'm gonna go in again with my Mod Podge and um, get it on there smear it down and make sure that it is uh, has as little of the wrinkles as you can get you have to be careful with Mod Podge and napkins because they can get wet and as you pull them or whatever, they can tear. So be super careful with those. 
Once you have it smoothed out, then you're gonna go over the top again with some more Mod Podge, and then, of course, set these aside to completely dry. So now that they are fully dry, it doesn't take them that long, but you can speed it up a little bit with a little hair dryer or heat gun. I'm then gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my um, sandpaper here, and I'm just gonna begin to sand it all the way around the edges. Now with the paper, of course, is a little bit different because um, I did kind of bring it over the edge a little bit and I started out with the sandpaper and um, you can do that completely, it just takes a little bit of time. But then I also, you'll see, I pick up my little um, craft knife here and I'm gonna go ahead and start to kind of cut it. And I did kind of gouge it just a little bit, but believe me, it's going to be fine because of what we're doing with it. Um, it's going to give it a little bit more rusticness to it because you know me and my farmhouse rustic, how much I love it, still loving it to this day. And so you're gonna see what we're gonna do with that. Well, now we're ready to give these a little finished look to them. I'm taking um, some of my Rust-Oleum uh, gel glaze uh, stain here and just gonna go in and um, fully coat these really well. I didn't do a whole lot of wiping off because I really wanted a darker look, but I go around all of the edges and the back completely. You'll also see that right here, after I've gotten them all done, I start to take my little sponge brush here and begin to just lightly brush towards the middle all the way around on all of the edges. And then go in with a paper towel and kind of smear everything towards the center. And this gives it a weathered look. Set this aside and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other one as well. Now that the, all the stain is completely dry, we're ready to embellish. Now, the pumpkin that I had done and painted, I did the same technique as I did around the edges of both of these pieces of wood, and I just used a, um, a paper towel to do it, as just like I did the other, just to give it a little more rustic look, and then I used some pit berries to make a little embellishment on it. Now you'll see I have the pumpkin ribbon in here to start with and I wind up changing the ribbon because I just wind up liking the other better. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Fixer family, I know that this video is a bit longer than normal, but I did want to jump in here in the middle of both of these awesome projects, and I wanted to share with you um, a really a, an apology. I know that last week there was not a video, and I didn't let you guys know that. There was all intentions to do so, and you know, life happens. I also want to let you know that I have been um, dealing with some health issues and um, there's lots of tests and prod and pro poking and prodding that's going on and all of that fun stuff. And we really don't have a lot of answers right now. And there is a huge possibility that videos will be sporadic over the next couple of months. I'm gonna try really hard, especially through the Christmas season, to bring you guys this, uh, the awesome projects I had in mind and planned for you, but there may be um, a couple of weeks or a week here and there that um, a video doesn't go up, and just know that it's not because I don't want to. I love bringing these videos to you. I love being able to share with you ideas on how you can decorate your home on a budget but know that I also have to take care of me and uh, just being able to know that you guys are um, knowing this and I'm asking also for your prayers. Just um, know as soon as I know, I will let you guys know. It has just not been a uh, fun journey, but I will definitely be sharing with you more as it comes. 
Also, as for the website that I have been telling you guys was coming, it was promised on the 15th. For those of you that do follow me on Instagram, you also know what happened with that. It was just a total debacle with the host company that I was using for my website. It, for some reason, the day before it was to launch, it was gone. All of my stuff, with the exception of the products that I had uploaded for you guys, everything else was gone, all the work that I'd put into it. So that is why the website did not go up. I don't know when it's going to happen now, and it may very well be just an answer saying that it didn't need to happen right now. So that is to coming. It's still there. It's still in my heart. It's a something that I definitely want to do and am planning to do but it may just be into the next year before it actually happens. So let's go ahead and get back into these videos and I hope that you guys enjoy the last project here. So here's what we need for this project. We're gonna be using a thin 16 inch round wood. We're gonna be using some ribbon. I've got some pit berries here, possibly some leaves, a welcome decal. I'm also gonna be using the tissue paper here, maybe this little pumpkin, the ones that we painted, and of course our polycrylic. So let's get started. Now I went ahead and stained the wood round and when it dried, it came up with this mark on it. I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but it's okay because we're gonna be covering it with our tissue paper. And we're gonna use our polycrylic to adhere it to the board. And I'm just gonna kinda eyeball where I want it and then I'm gonna begin to put a layer of the polycrylic down and then lay my tissue paper on top of it. Once I have the polycrylic on there, I'm going to easily place our tissue paper on top of that and lightly begin to move from the inside out, um, smoothing it out. And now guys, you will have a little bit of wrinkling as you're smoothing it out, but to me, it adds to the look of this. And there will also be some places that you might not have gotten enough of your polycrylic just add a little bit more and then just begin to smooth with your hand. Be super careful if you're lifting it like you see me doing here to try to get as much of the bubbles and wrinkles out as I can because as this gets wet of course it will tear because it is tissue paper. But just easily smooth it out and um, then we're going to go and put a layer of the polycrylic on top of it to finish sealing it out. Now, the one thing that you will see about this, that at first I really didn't know if I liked it, was as I put the top layer on, the white began to disappear because it was getting wet. But to me, at the end, you'll see it really does look good. But we're gonna do this, and then once we get it fully saturated and covered really well, we're gonna set it aside to dry. Now, taking our sandpaper and doing the same thing, we're just gonna begin to just go all the way around the uh, tissue paper and go ahead and take that off. Now, I did put a layer of the polycrylic on the top part as well. Now that everything is dry, we are ready to put our decal on. We're gonna take the back off and then just eyeball it is the best way I did it. You can use a ruler however you want to do it, but I just eyeballed it where I wanted it and be careful when you put it down, it's immediately going to stick. So make sure you've got it exactly where you want it. Just using my little squeegee here and then we're going to take up our um, transfer tape here and then go ahead and uh, begin to do the rest of this.
Now I'm going to be getting ready to add a bow and I'm using two different types of bow uh, ribbon here that I got from Hobby Lobby. One is two and a half inches long and the other one is one and a half inches long and I'm cutting five strips each at 18 inches long. And guys, I will link right up in the iCards for you um, the tutorial I did on this specific type of bow. Once we get everything kind of laid out, ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and cut my dovetails in all the ribbon and then begin to assemble. I don't know about you guys, but one of my most favorite things about after making a bow is the fluffing um, process. Just pulling the loops out, moving them around, manipulating them where you want them. And that's why I love so much using wired ribbon. Now before we attach it to our door round here, we are going to go ahead and add a hanger to the back. Now, like I told you in the beginning, it is a very thin piece of wood, thinner than I really um, expected it to be. And so you have to be super careful when you're using um, staples or you know anything like that. And hot glue, if it's on a front door, um, is not going to be uh, really good because especially in the heat of Alabama, that hot glue will get hot and it will fall off. <laughs> so I'm going to use a combination of both. And because the rope that I'm using as my anger is um, a bit thick, I used a staple in it and just double checked the front of it to make sure that it had not come through. And I did wind up putting two of them in there. Now once I did that, I was ready to attach my bow. And guys, you got, can embellish this any way you want. And I did go ahead and start with a little bit of hot glue. And of course, I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue. Um, it is a little bit stronger than your regular hot glue, craft hot glue. But still, I am going to reinforce it. Um, using the staple gun and you'll see what I'm going to do because it will it did go through um, on this but I'm going to flip up the bow and find some of the smaller ends of my ribbon as you see here and I'm going to go ahead and put a staple in and the staple did go through like I said so I'm going to put a piece of wood to kind of lift it up and then I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and fold it over. Do it on both sides and then use a little bit of hot glue to make it safe where it doesn't scratch your door or anyone's hand and let that completely dry and it will be perfectly fine. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thank you guys for sticking around with me on this awesome journey that I have had over three years now. And consider becoming a part of this Fixer family if you're not already by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified each time I have videos go live. And if no one has told you, you are absolutely amazing. And keep looking up because that's where it all is. I'll see you on the next video.